very warm welcome to the channel and so great to have you here. So is it possible that in this video we get more conclusive proof and evidence as to what really happened to Johnny Depp's finger and who was it that injured his finger? Well, before we dive into the material that I'm going to talk about, obviously, in this video, I want to answer this question in a very strictly loyally manner. So forgive me, but this is what lawyers do. So to answer that question very strictly, the answer is no, because it's not evidence as such, and I'll explain why. Because this was a document within the unsealed documents which were not admitted into evidence in the Virginia trial, and indeed this was not uh, admitted into evidence in the uh, English Court of Appeal either. Uh, and I'll come back to that and I'll explain how that happened later on. But first of all, this essentially was a document that was sealed and therefore not put before the jury, not in evidence, um, but it is a document that purports to be by Jennifer Howell as a declaration as to what happened. There is also, interestingly, the witness statement, which um, in the UK trial, um, Johnny Depp's lawyers sought to adduce into evidence as uh, fresh evidence for the matter of the appeal. And that was refused, as I said, all of which I'll come back to in just a moment. So moving first of all to that document itself. So with that out of the way, um, with the legalities of this not being evidence and just a document and so on out of the way, um, it does show at least potentially that this was uh, what Jennifer Howell believed to have happened. So this is a basis upon which to discuss it and from which you might draw some conclusions based on the fact that this document exists, but with those warnings in place. So let's move to that document and take a look at that now. I've tried to make it a little bit bigger so that hopefully you can see it properly this time. So who was Jennifer Howell? Well, Jennifer Howell ultimately was a friend of Whitney uh, Enriquez, Amber's sister. So it's easier to explain by literally reading out some of this. So, I'm over the age of 18 and not a party to this action. I have first-hand personal knowledge of the facts set forth and, if called as a witness, could uh, competently testify thereto. Whitney Enriquez, whose maiden name was Whitney Heard, is my dear friend. She's told me that I'm her chosen sister. I also call her my chosen sister. Whitney worked for me at a non-profit organisation I founded 22 years ago and run called The Art of Elysium. We take artists and help them be of service to communities in need. We serve 30,000 individuals each year. Whitney volunteered for the organisation in 2014 for about six months and she worked full-time as a paid employee for me in 2015-16 to 16, uh, where Whitney served as the art salon manager and director. So those are the introductions as to who she is and how she knows her and so you might conclude from that you could go away and research the facts um, which are like you know on the balance of probabilities even without me going on to research it myself on the balance of probabilities much more likely to be true than not so um, I haven't I haven't gone and done that but I um, have a reasonable basis to conclude that all of that is true so far uh, moving on um, I've learned that Whitney testified in court on July 23rd in London about a violent incident in March 2015 on the stairs at Johnny's uh, Depp's penthouse. She testified that Johnny supposedly hit Amber and Whitney on the stairs and at Johnny's uh, downtown penthouse. Now, you'll remember uh, from my previous videos that um, there are a number of different accounts as to what happened on those stairs. Push versus pull versus hit. Um, who was in front, who was upstairs, downstairs, and so on and so forth. So there are different ways of looking at that incident itself. So I might suggest this is just uh, another person's uh, account of what they think about this, depending on what's said next. So this is the way that I would read this and think about it as I read through it. So moving on. So with that in mind, um, then uh, Whitney said that she had to go to live with her employer where she'd been on the sleep on the floor. I am that employer. This is not what I was told to be true. First, Whitney came to live in the guest room of my apartment on Wiltshire Boulevard, not on my floor, but in my guest room. Second, when Whitney arrived, she was a mess. Whitney told me she tried to stop her sister 
from hitting and attacking Johnny on the stairs. Whitney said she tried to intervene to stop Amber from going after Johnny. Amber nearly pushed Whitney down the stairs. She told me she was worried about Amber was going to kill Johnny. She told me she'd endured that kind of abuse her entire life, first from her father and then from Amber, who she said was extremely violent. She lived with me because she did not feel she could go back to live at the Eastern Columbia building. Um, my father, I think that says, reminded me this morning uh, that I told him that Whitney'd moved in with me because she was terrified of her sister. So all of this, on the face of it, an account uh, recalling what people had said and um, essentially contradicting uh, what Amber and her lawyers have been putting across and supporting what Johnny Depp's uh, lawyers and he indeed has been saying that it was Amber who was the violent one in uh, this uh, relationship. Moving on, um, while Whitney was living with me she told me Johnny kept checking in to see how she was doing and that she called her his, excuse me, and that she called her sis and she called him brother. Whitney said to me on multiple occasions that she did not know why he was uh, staying in the relationship, nor why he was putting up with Amber's abuse. Whitney shared with me the damage endured by both her and Amber as children and the injuries she'd suffered from Amber, both psychologically and physically. Whitney was devastated during this time, and my heart broke for her. And it goes on. When Whitney came back from New York... She shared with me and everyone in the office that Amber freaked out, attacked Whitney and threw a wine glass full of red wine at her in the elevator. Now you'll recall, just pausing there, you'll recall the video that surfaced of Whitney at the poolside discussing whether or not uh, Amber was physically attacking and physically abusive towards her, um, which... I said previously, based on that video, to me seems credible and contradicted uh, what what she said in that Amber was not the uh, the aggressive one. It, it seemed to me, based on that video, that uh, this indeed was true. So again, coupled with other bits of information on the face of it, this sounds to me uh, like a, a credible statement. Although remember this document um, was not um, in evidence. It was sealed and uh, we'll come back to that in just a moment. But moving on, this um, now coming on to the bit with the finger. Uh, while Amber and Johnny were in Australia, Whitney was in the office sitting in the black and white chairs near the kitchen and loudly proclaimed, Oh my God, she's done it now. She's cut off his <clears throat> finger. So, this seems to suggest, just for clarity, that the declaration or a purported declaration of Jennifer Howell supports the account that it was Amber that injured his finger. Not that he accidentally did it himself. And so when you look at this in the grand scheme of the evidence overall that was presented, bearing in mind the jury did not see this, it further support what I have said before as my view as to what really happened. Now, there are obviously various reasons as to why this uh, may not have been in evidence. Um, and indeed, in the UK trial, as I said, I would come back to, they apparently obtained it after the trial, after the evidence had closed in the UK trial. And... Um, there was a witness statement produced, um, which I, I will I will dig up. But um, the application notice in the UK trial for the Court of Appeal was to um, rely upon additional witness statement of Jennifer Howell, uh, dated the thirteenth of January, and attached to the application notice, and support the appeal against the decision of Mr. Justice Nickel. And of course, that witness statement will uh, broadly say the same as um, the declaration we've just looked at. Uh, but of course, in the appeal judgment, 
the conclusion was that the court dismissed the application for permission to adduce further evidence and the application for permission to appeal. Um, and as the appeal court said, as we've said, it's not easy to persuade this court to overturn the findings of uh, a trial judge based on factual questions. Now, many people might feel that um, it was it should have been right that this was um, admitted and and allowed into evidence as part of the appeal. And indeed, if it uh, if it does sort of strongly contradict that material, uh, you'd be forgiven in my view for for, for believing that. So uh, there it is. Um, is it concrete evidence? No. Um, is it likely, in my view, yes, based on everything that we have heard that was in evidence, uh, it, it seems to corroborate, it seems to follow the events, it seems to follow the material that has been put in evidence and statements that have been made. So, in my view, I would say that this is a credible um, declaration of Jennifer Howell, and this is what she says happened. She says it was Amber that injured the finger. So, as always, um, I hope you found that interesting. This is just yet one further document that has been uh, unsealed that I found interesting to look at because ultimately it supports, once again, the jury's verdict. I've said many times that we trust juries, we trust the jury verdict, even in the absence of uh, additional evidence that they could have seen that, that would have supported that account. But nonetheless, it was uh, sealed until now. So this is but one uh, further document. Uh, many more to come. I will also be having a chat with uh, Andrea Burkhart. Uh, so please do uh, tune in for that video later. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell. Um, leave comments and make sure that you uh, receive that video notification when that comes out. Uh, I'll be talking to Andrew about um, items that she found of interest during this trial um, and uh, indeed documents that have been unsealed that she's found interesting as well. So with that said, I thank you very much for your time. I hope you join me back here for more. And um, remember what I've said, this is an unfolding discussion uh, about unsealed documents which were not admitted into evidence. But with that, I thank you for your time and I thank you for